Dear viewers, we are back from this report and we have been joined by our first guest, the psychologist, Mohamed Derwish. And as promised, we're going to be discussing a very important subject, which is eating disorders. Good evening. Welcome back to Hala Kuwait. Good evening. Hey, I'm really glad to be here on Hala Kuwait. Thank you so much for being here. So we're going to be talking about eating disorders today. A lot of people know what it is and a lot have no idea that this thing exists, although it's something that a lot of people actually do deal with. So in the beginning, what are eating disorders? So eating disorders are problems that affect a person's eating behavior as well as their attitudes and feelings about food and their body. Yes. and. I kind of know that there's more than one type, right? And uh, exactly. every type is very different from the other. So what are the different types of eating disorders out there? So the most common eating disorders are anorexia nervosa, then bulimia nervosa. Yes. Third one is uh, restrictive food intake disorder or avoidant food intake disorder. Mm -hmm. Those are the three ones. So can you explain uh, what it's like? I think anorexia is the most famous one or the one we see most in movies. And uh, sometimes you can really tell by looking at a person that they are dealing with anorexia. Right. Uh, with anorexia, like, let's start with anorexia first. Yes. So with people with a anorexia, they will eat very little on purpose. And they'll have an intense fear of weight gain and fear looking fat. Mm -hmm. Let's come to the bulimia now. It's totally the opposite. With bulimia, it's people they overeat and they feel out of control to stop yes. then they do things to make up for that overeating such mm -hmm. as using laxative and diuretics for yes. on purpose let's come to the third one now mm -hmm. with avoidant res or restrictive food intake disorder yes. with these people they do not fear gaining weight they are not they don't have like a distorted body image mm -hmm. they are not af they are not afraid to gain weight or lose it, you know, but they usually lose a lot of weight. Yes. Th these are the symptoms for them. So with the third one, it's more of an issue that a person would have, uh, we can say with their relationship with food? Exactly. Also with some personal issues like mm -hmm. OCD could be a factor, depression right. could be a factor with that, mm -hmm. you know. And for anorexia and bulimia, we can say that it definitely goes towards uh, being body dysmorphic. Exactly, kind of, yeah. So uh, can you be anorexic without being body dysmorphic? Is that a thing? Or is it something that comes after dysmorphia? Actually, you can have both mm -hmm. anorexia and body dysfo dysphoria, yes. you know. And actually, you can have one of each. Okay. Either one of them, you know. Mm -hmm. Like you can have both. It's like, right. it's like PTSD and other a stress disorder you can have both like OCD and BTSD or you can have only BTSD or OCD this is still a mental health mm -hmm. illness Definitely. and it's all uh, very serious for sure but I think what a lot yeah. of people don't know that there's a lot of health issues that come with the having eating disorders you know it's not only uh, physical stuff when it comes right. to food you can actually develop illnesses so uh, can we talk more about uh, how these disorders can affect our health you will find that the majority of people with eating disorders have swollen cheeks because of the salivary glands. Mm -hmm. You'll find also the majority of them have low blood pressure. Other symptoms they can have is irregular or slow heartbeats yes. with them. So all of these can be like a good indicates or red flags for diagnosing a person with eating disorder. Yes, and even I know that when it comes to bulimia, especially because they go through a lot of binging and later purging, it does lead to even dental issues, right? Exactly. A lot of them will go to dentists for working with cavities and yes. other like acidic problems in mm -hmm. their like mouth. And yes, which is very unfortunate. So what causes eating disorders? Because uh, honestly, a lot of people might have an issue with their weight and it does push them towards uh, disorders and other people, you know, they are trying to uh, maybe become skinnier or whatever it is, lose some pounds, <coughs> but at the same time, they're not dealing with any eating disorder. So how do you really get this? Right. So there are many factors that could increase the chance of getting an eating disorder. Let's discuss these first. Yes. Poor body image, mm -hmm. dieting at a young age, having okay. an, an anxiety, mm -hmm. having a vulnerability to a depression. These all could be a strong factors to work 
toward the cause of eating disorder, but there is no certain cause for causing eating disorders. Mm -hmm. So there isn't anything specific. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. about the factors in your life and genes, environment, and significant events all play a role at one time, you know. Since it's like correlation doesn't mean causation, you know, just to state that point. Definitely. So since you mentioned genes, could it be a genetic thing also, like runs in the family? Exactly. Most people with eating disorders have a family member who had an eating disorder. Yes. And it's found on research. Okay, so I think it's really important to know if you have anything like that in your family history. Exactly. Trans into family, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And another thing is, is that I think personally that social media, even magazines back in the day when we didn't have social media, does play a big role because body image does play a role when it comes to eating disorders. Do you think that people are still affected by, by what they're seeing on social media? Is that causing uh, maybe a rise in the number of patients that are dealing with eating disorders? Definitely. Like uh, many research shows that in the upcoming 20 years, you know, men will suffer from eating disorders and they want to look exactly like how heroes on new movies look like you know yes. they want the perfect shoulders chest six packs you know all mm -hmm. of these to be perfectly set on their bodies you know mm -hmm. so this could be a like negative you know reinforcement toward their behavior toward food their attitudes you know exactly. about their body image how they look like that's right yeah and I think it's a misconception that only women deal with eating disorders. Uh, so it's very interesting that you did actually mention that it men is. are very prone to it too. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It is like, it is stere uh, stereotypically mentioned toward women, but there is a, like a significant number that mm -hmm. men, of men that suffer from eating disorder. Not necessarily just anorexia is the disorder. Let's check on the bulimia, you know. Right. Let's check on the AFRID. You know, mm -hmm. all of them can back the law of men. Definitely. So let's go towards treatment. Now that we know what eating disorders are like, <coughs> wh how is it treated? Is there a certain treatment <coughs> plan? So treatment includes like nutrition counseling, medical care, mm -hmm. psychotherapy. Oh, wow. And there will be doctors who will check height and weight and compare these to previous measurements on a chart growth and they'll like just observe the significant differences that the patient go through. Mm -hmm. But if the person didn't go through these of all of these, you know, it's not a complete treatment because it's right. still based on a biopsychosocial model when mm -hmm. it comes to treating someone with a mental health illness, you know, special. So usually with anxiety or depression, uh, the patient only has to see one doctor usually, either a psychologist or a psychiatrist, depending on the case. But here with the eating disorder, you're talking about at least four doctors. Exactly. It's a very significant matter. Yes. And would you say that it's a good idea to even consider rehab if the patient does need it, since they need all this medical care? A lot of people, they'll go to rehab. It's mm -hmm. like a necessary thing because like they want to change their ideas toward food their ideas toward themselves how mm -hmm. do I look like how do I give an appearance to my audience to my job to my teammates you know yes yeah so they will go through it they will need to read about the statistics about mm -hmm. people who have this weight and who have this body they want to see like they are above average you know or below average or they right. are hitting the baseline definitely it's a very long journey, of course, uh, to be treated with such diseases, but is there any medication that a patient could actually take when it comes to eating disorder? With eating disorders like with anorexia, some people like, some people with antidepressants medications, it will help them, you know, mm -hmm. but it's not a symptom of taking antidepressant med medications to right. increase weight or like you gain weight because of that. Mm -hmm. Because with people who have like anorexia nervosa, because of the food that they don't eat, some pills will not work out with the ke chemical substance mm -hmm. in their brain, you know, so they will be, the receptors there will be really lazy to receive some, like, signals from the medicine, so, like, it will not work. Mm -hmm. So each case, based on the severity and the ideas that the person have, you know, 
It does differ for sure from patient to another. As you said, the severity does play a big role. And something else is that how can we spread awareness when it comes to this topic? Because I personally know a lot of people that have gone through eating disorders without even knowing that they actually have a disorder. They're dealing with a mental or physical illness. Yeah, I would say, like, post about it, you know, don't be shy to talk about it. Post a body positive post on social media, attend, like, eating disorders events, prioritize, like, mental health week or wellness week yes. events, you know. Those events can give you a lot of awarenesses about it if you just do campaigns in it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will be, yeah, we know that's kind of anxious to be thinking about food in that way or about right. body image in that way that's definitely very true and uh, even when we're on social media on different platforms even fitness accounts have also come out and posted the before and after of their photos being edited like yes we're promoting working out we're promoting a good body image but every human sometimes does uh, change their photos a bit so i think it's really important for everyone to know that not everything on social media is real exactly like uh, one of the let's say phenomena that happened on tiktok or other social media is that like uh, let's say anorexia is a choice rather than a disease or an illness and that's totally a misconception idea yes. that can distort your life your reality about mm -hmm. food and your body image and how you like have this idea about your appearance you know yes. because too much focus on appearance is a very strong factor toward eating disorders like people who have families members who have these ideas mm -hmm. have more problems with eating disorders than people who do not have family members who talk a lot negatively about your body image yes. how should you look Definitely. I think that's a very great point because sometimes in family gatherings, unfortunately, the first thing we do is comment on someone's appearance. You gained weight, you lost weight. So it's very important, dear viewers, to keep that in mind because you never know what someone could be going through with eating disorders. So finally, do you have any final advice? Actually, I just uh, hope to tell people to take care of themselves and not worry about their body image that much. Just mm -hmm. try to be healthy and that's it. Perfect. I think that's great advice. And thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Dear viewers, we had with us the psychologist Mohammed Derwish. And up next, we have a report on the Italian music band. Stay tuned.